to die coming back to pick it back up for all these years. It's amazing. Um, it, you know, it's the, the past 10 years have just kind of flown by, and um, I have actually not been back once to Pittsburgh, not even through the airport, not once since I first left. Um, so when I first came into town and I was driving down the roads, I was remembering, oh yeah, this is where we used to get sandwiches, and this is where we used to rehearse, and this, you know, it was just really a nice kind of homey feeling to be back. So, um, uh, because it was in, two th you, know, you left in 2000? I left in 2000, yeah. It wasn't because I was arriving, was no. it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we sort of, I remember distinctly, I remember this so well, um, I had come in sort of early, my contract was starting on July, in July of 2000, and I had come in for some reason or other, and uh, somebody said, oh, come on downstairs, because we're doing the Brown Bag Opera, and I said, oh, what's that? And it was a Wednesday afternoon, and uh, I snuck into the, in, into the bag, and there was Kate singing. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, you don't remember. Do you remember? I, I don't know. Maybe no. second year, maybe. You know. It could very well have been, and I kind of went, wow. Um, well, she's good. Um, and um, that was a very good omen for me uh, about coming. So I thought, oh, well, this is clearly a, a great company, a great place to have young singers like this. So, um, and then you, you went off to some, very rapidly, some extraordinary things. Yeah, um, actually it was here that kind of my career began because the, the then artistic director of La Reina di Verona, which is the big coliseum in Verona where they have the big open air operas, um, used to come and do master classes for the young artists. And he heard me my second year um, and he said, oh, do you know um, Prezzesilla in La Forza, <laughs> which you can't say the name because it's bad luck, um, but it's La Forza, <laughs> <laughs> um, you can spit if you want. <laughs> um, and you said no. And, and I said no. He was like, you should look at that. I'm like, okay, great. So I got the score being very diligent. I'm going to study this and look it over. And so I, I looked it over and I say, oh, it feels good in my voice. And so I went back to him and I said, yeah, I, I looked at the Prezzesilla. And he said, and how is it for you? I said, oh, it, it actually feels really good in my voice. And he said, perfect. So there's three performances. The first one is. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Where is this? And so he said, Lorena di Verona. Okay. So then I go, we had our Italian teacher here when we were young artists, uh, uh, Lucente, Carla, Lucente. Carla yeah. Lucente. So. Yeah. And who I love, if any of you know her, please tell her I said hi. Um, I said to her, have you heard of this place called Lorena di Verona? <laughs> <laughs> she said, yeah, I guess I'm singing there this summer, so. So that was kind of where it all got started, and from but, there. But Prezio Zilla is, is a fairly dramatic um, yeah. uh, mentor cool. role, and some Ish, ish yeah. Ish, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of like, it, it's mm, on the lighter side of a Verdi mezzo, <laughs> but it's still Verdi. So, right. but she's got some color tour, and she's sort of like the Carmen in, in <coughs> La Forza. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but you were then about 25, 26, so yeah, 26, 26, yeah. Right, uh, which generally would be considered to be a little young to be yes. doing a verdi, but you were you were brave and you did it and it worked out very well. Yeah, it was right. very overwhelming and scary, but it was very so much so that you then took on a really dramatic answer. Right? Tell yes. us about that. So then, <laughs> um, so then I. Um, Actually, another connection that I made here in Pittsburgh, Renata Scotto, who used to also do master classes with us, had been interested in me, and um, Franco Zaffirelli had gone to her and said, I want to do this new version of Aida, and I want it to be really small with all young singers, unknown singers. Um, do you have any recommendations? And so she gave him a couple of names, and I was one of the names. Um, so I went and did an audition in New York, probably the November after I left here, and he took me on. Um, and we went to Buceta, which was Verdi's hometown, and we did this um, very small, but very special, I still am a big believer in this production, uh, version of Aida. And um, it was, you know, it was very stressful because it wasn't only that we were, all of us were just debuting and we were doing it for DVD, we were doing it for live television for the anniversary of Verdi's death, so, you know, it's important in Italy and Buceto, in that area of Italy, which is like, you know, the, the holy ground of opera. Um, and with Zeffirelli, and all eyes were kind of on us, and it was incredibly stressful. In addition to that, there were about two or three singers per role 
just in case, in case you didn't <laughs> pan out. It was amazing. Okay. It was really amazing. He's very, um, very demanding, and he knows what he wants. And I think, in a, in a way, it was strategic for him to have as many singers as he had to make us all kind of bring up our game. Um, but he, the way he gets the drama out of you is very unique. It's, um, he looks for angles that um, most stage directors do not take. Um, and sometimes it can even be upsetting because he's, he's not interested in being your best friend. Hmm. But in the end, he, he was like a father figure, a grandfather figure, I, I, and is someone that I hold very. Did he spend a lot of time working with the supers and the, and the chorus as well in the production? Yeah, I mean, it was, yeah. When I think back on it, it was a just. A lot of detail, probably. A lot of detail, and the costumes had to be just so, and, you know, the, the soldiers that were blue. And they had to be painted blue just so. I mean, it was just, it was very, it was very intense. Very anyway, it's on DVD, you can all go out and get it. We should all go out and get it. I haven't seen it, and I'd love, love, love to see it. Uh, Frank has already did a, a Pagliacci with us in LA. Mm -hmm. um, and I seem to remember that uh, Silvio and Edda were going at it, you know, doing that very dramatic um, duet and, you know, rolling around on the floor and really being very, uh, very intense about yeah. it. And then they finished, and they looked up expectantly, and he said, see, 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 he walked right past them and started to direct the supers right yeah, exactly. behind them. <laughs> Much more interested in thinking that. Yeah, exactly. um, so Carmen, of course, is, uh, uh, I guess, a calling card uh, yeah. for you. Right. And, and how have you been doing it a lot? Um, I've been doing it quite a lot, actually. I, I don't, um, however, having said that, I don't want to only do Carmen, so mm. I'm sort of strategic about how many that I'm taking on. Um, because it is one of those things that can get sort of typecasting. And I love, I have so much other great repertoire that I love, right. the Bel Canto stuff, um, some of the other French repertoire, the Mozart, <coughs> and, um, but I do sing a fair amount of Carmen's. And it's, it's one of those operas that every opera company at some point within, you know, 10 year period brings Will it out. Do. Exactly. Right. So it's, it's done often enough that I can do it, you know, maybe two, three times a year. And I guess you will agree to also there's this other little company on the East Coast that we were talking about. Are you, are you going to do it? You're prepared to do it the, there? The Met. The, the Met. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Oh. Uh, yeah, so, so when are you, because I, I've lost track of when you're doing it there. So that, okay, I was slated to do it in January, but then I got a call um, about a month ago and they want me to do the performances in the end of April and the beginning of May. So. That will be this, this April, this May. Yeah. Oh, like wow. that. So we're all good. Hear it again? Yeah. And then you get to do it again in the next season, or what? I mean. And then I'm also still doing it in January. Uh -huh. I haven't met, and I'm doing it also in Chicago between um, the two. So you've actually got quite a quite a slew of coming up. So what, yeah. what other roles are you doing in between? <laughs> actually, ironically, I'm also doing a Maria Stuarda in May as well. Oh, like yeah. the maestro is also doing. He's gone now, but um, <laughs> he, it, it's in um, Palermo. Uh -huh. So that's after um, the Met, and then I'm going to La Scala to make my debut there in Barber of Seville. And then I'm going to Pesaro, and I'm doing um, Cenerentola this uh, August. Mm. That's all wonderful. Mm -hmm. And so you've been quite successful because I suppose of that, uh, that early break in Verona uh, of making a, a career in Europe as well, which mm -hmm. is of course always a great challenge. Uh, for American singers to be able to yeah. to be heard and seen there, and but also to maintain uh, performances here, so yeah. that has worked out quite well, and you managed yeah. to balance uh, both. Yeah, it's, I've yeah. been really lucky with that. I think, especially um, the Italian world is, is much. It's very hard to kind of get in, mm -hmm. um, and but once you're in, then it's not necessarily easy to do other things because right. you, know, you kind of. Into that. expect you to, <coughs> to do only, only there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so. Well, we don't ever want that ever to happen, and we want no. you to keep on coming back. So, Good. Kate Aldrich, thank you.